Welcome to our world. I'm Orby the Orbiter, and this is my friend Amber. Follow us, and you'll have a chance to learn about NASA's orbiters and see what amazing things the shuttle fleet accomplished just because it flew. For three decades, NASA space shuttles have rocketed to low Earth orbit. The shuttle was different than any other vehicle ever built. When the engineers were first planning the spacecraft, they were told they needed to build a truck that could fly. The result was an amazing space transportation system that would change the history of space exploration forever. The names of the shuttles even had special significance. Each of the spacecraft was named after a sailing ship that had played an important role in history. Columbia, Challenger, Discovery, Atlantis, and Endeavour, the only shuttle to be named by students. Speaking of students, hey Amber, I'll bet you have lots of questions about the shuttle. You bet I do, Orby. Just how many times have the shuttles actually launched? Altogether, my sister shuttles have flown 135 amazing missions and have traveled over 826 million kilometers while orbiting Earth. If those kilometers were stretched out in a straight line, the shuttles would have traveled farther than the planet Jupiter. Wow, that's a long way. Why was the shuttle built, anyway? NASA needed a large spacecraft that could carry huge satellites, like the Hubble Space Telescope, to space. They also had plans to build a new space station. The International Space Station would be so big, it would have to be built in space. But each shuttle also carried another important cargo, the crew. 355 different astronauts have flown on the space shuttle, and some of those astronauts flew on several different missions. Wow, that sounds like a big job. How big was the shuttle to be able to do all that? To do its job, the shuttle had to be pretty big. Each orbiter was about 37 meters in length. That's just over three school buses long. And the orbiter isn't even the tallest part of the space shuttle system. A space shuttle transportation system is actually made up of three separate pieces. The orbiter, the large white section that looks like a plane and holds the crew and cargo, the external fuel tanks, big tanks that hold the liquid oxygen and liquid nitrogen fuel for the shuttle main engines, and the solid rocket boosters, reusable rockets that provided the main thrust needed to get the shuttle off the launch pad. If you've ever seen the Statue of Liberty, you know just how tall the shuttles are. Once the shuttles were built, did they make any changes to them? Just like you might upgrade your computer or cell phone, the shuttles got upgrades and repairs over the years. You may know that two of NASA's shuttles Challenger and Columbia and their crews were lost in tragic accidents. But the courage of the brave men and women aboard those crews served as an inspiration to continue the program, building on the lessons learned from each and every shuttle flight to make sure the astronauts were as safe as possible as they carried out their missions. One upgrade we saw was a drag chute added when the youngest orbiter, Endeavour, was built to take the place of Challenger. Let's talk to Richard Jones, a shuttle flight director at NASA, who can tell us about these parachutes. When the pilots were applying brake pressure to stop the orbiter, it was heating up those brakes a lot. And so engineers decided, you know, there's a better way to kind of make it a little bit more simple for the crew to stop. So they put a parachute on the back of the shuttle. Initially, there's a drogue chute or a pilot chute that comes out and then it yanks a bigger parachute out of it. And that parachute uh, really took some of the stress that the crew was putting on, on the brakes and uh, that allowed the, the shuttle to stop in the same amount of distance but with less brake pressure. Now, it, that's, that's a safety improvement. You know, you don't have to, you know, sim you know, rely heavily on one single system to do something as important as stop on the runway. I mean, stopping on the runway is important. You don't want to stop somewhere where you don't want to be. The shuttles have finished their last flights. What's going to happen to them now? Great question, Amber. NASA space shuttles are going to have new homes all over the country so they can continue to inspire the next generation of explorers and engineers. The shuttle Enterprise, the first orbiter built but never actually flown in space, will be moving from the Smithsonian's Air and Space Museum to a new home at the Intrepid Sea Air and Space Museum in New York City. Shuttle Discovery will be going to the Smithsonian's Udvar Hazy Center in Virginia. Endeavour is going to the California Science Center in Los Angeles. And Atlantis will be displayed at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex in Florida. The shuttle program has been retired, but NASA will continue to build on the success of those flights and has already begun planning what's next. So Amber, we still have a whole universe to explore, and the shuttles have lots more they can teach us. I hope you get a chance to go visit one of the orbiters at its new home. Thanks, Orby. 
And when I do, you can bet I'll think about all the times the shuttles flew, both in and out of our world. <laughs>